Well, hi, everybody. I'm Dr. John Chovic, and I'm here again as part of Switch Doc Labs Weather Week, where we're going through a whole bunch of weather instrumentation that both professional and amateurs use to measure things about the weather. You know, weather affects all of us, right? Well, I tell you, today we have an exciting little show for you. We're actually going to talk about wind vanes, which measure the direction the wind goes in. But we'll be back on that in just a minute. Some of you uh, may know that uh, I actually co-founded a bank. Yeah, I know, about 15 years ago. No, no, I'm not a banker. I'm still a technology guy, but I've been in the board of directors for a long time. And, you know, we're really interested in banking customers. That leads me to my joke of the day. Well, I wanted to make a weather joke, right? So tell me, do you know where snowmen put their money? Why, in the snowbank. Yeah, okay. So that wasn't very good. I'll try to come up with a better one for next time. So today, we're going to be talking about wind vanes. Now, let me just give you a quick overview of all the different weather instruments we're talking about during Switch Talk Labs Weather Week here. Well, last time, we talked about the anemometer, which measures, measures wind speed. That was kind of cool. That was fun. Next time, we're going to talk about the rain bucket, the self emptying, tipping rain bucket and how you interface to that with your computer. And then a little while later, we're going to talk about our outside temperature and humidity sensor and how you connect that into your computer, which is pretty cool and very, very accurate. Then we're going to talk about the Switch Talk Labs weather board we have, which allows you to put all sorts of cool things together and connect them up to your uh, Raspberry Pi, including the weather instruments we're talking about today. And today, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the wind vane. Which direction is the wind blowing? You know, sometimes it's important to know that because you can see storms coming and you want to know how to put up your flags and all that sort of stuff. It's a pretty cool little instrument. We're going to be talking about how this works. Okay, so what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about how it works, the fact you need an analog to digital converter, which is a pretty big set of words, but I gave a talk about a week ago on the analog to digital converters and what they are, and you could look that up on the uh, Switch Talk Labs uh, uh, YouTube channel to get a handle on that. Then finally, we're gonna talk about some of the other ways you can measure wind speed just from using a wind vane, then rather than just using a wind vane. Okay, so let's launch right into this. This is a wind vane. It looks very much like the wind vanes that have been on top of barns for many, many, many years. The wind blows, and because of the string of the, because of this flap back here, it will go and uh, eventually stabilize on which direction the wind is going. You mount it so north is pointing north, there's a little N on this somewhere, and you mount it up there, and then your computer has to read it. And that's where we're gonna start talking about the way this works. How does this look to a computer? Okay. I want to show you uh, some boring documentation here. Uh, this comes out of a Switch Talk Labs kit where you have the wind vane, the uh, rain bucket, and the anemometer, and it's called a weather rack. And here's a, a picture from the specification. What I want to point out to you is this little diagram right here. This shows you how the wind vane works, except I need to explain it a little bit. Now, <clears throat> how it works is there's eight little switches inside the wind vane here. And uh, what we do is uh, as the wind vane moves around, a little magnet inside the wind vane, very similar to the anemometer, will go over each one of these little eight switches here. And what it does, it switches in a different resistor. Now, we don't have to talk about resistors and capacitors and things like that. Resistor resists current, but when you have current going through a resistor, it produces a voltage. Okay, and it's V equals IR for those who want to know Ohm's law. Ohm, right? Sounds like a yoga, yoga thing, yoga thing, not a yoga thing, a yoga. Well, I'll tell you, here's how it works. What you do, as that little magnet goes around in there and stabilizes on something, it connects a couple of resistors together, one or more resistor together here, and that creates a certain voltage. And the resistors are set up in such a fashion that every one of 16 directions has a different resistance value. 
So as it turns around here, you change the resistance value, change the resistance value, change the resistance value. Since we have it connected to a known voltage, five volts or 3.3 volts coming off your computer, we can tell by looking at the current, uh, looking at the voltage in a voltage divider actually, but effectively measuring the current, we can tell which resistor has been clicked. Now, that creates a voltage. Now, what is a voltage? Okay, I think it's time for the whiteboard to come up. And hopefully I've got the little better at drawing things than I did last time, but uh, if so, you're just going to have to kind of suffer through it. Now, so we have two things in the computer world. We have digital, which are ones and zeros, and analog voltages, which vary between zero and five volts in this case or zero and 3.3 volts if you hook it up to a Raspberry Pi, but zero and the power supply. It, it varies according to that. I'm just going to say five volts for the rest of this talk. Just understand in some cases, you'd have 3.3 volts on it, okay? So the voltage varies between zero and five volts. And depending on what resistor you have connected, the voltage will vary between zero and five volts. So by looking at the voltage and comparing it to a table, we can actually determine which direction our wind vane is pointing. If I had a ohm meter hooked up to this right now, I could actually, uh, you could actually see the resistance vary. So what does this look like to a computer? Well, remember last time, or we had talked about digital, zero, one. So this would be a one, this would be a zero here, and this would be a one here, great. Now, what we're getting here are analog voltages. Now, from a technical viewpoint, everything is analog. But to a digital engineer, to the way we play with computers, we abstract these to one and zero, and all voltages are either one or zero. And you kind of stay away from the middle where it could be either one. That's the way digital stuff works. So what are we getting out of here? Well, we have five volts up here, five volts. And we have zero volts, otherwise known as ground, down here. Now, as the weather vane turns, you will find voltages like this. Okay, and all the way up to almost five volts. This might correspond to south. This might correspond to north, northwest. It's not quite as uh, obvious as you think it is because the, the, the way the resistors work inside, but this might be north up here. And so, what you do, we can look at this and say, okay, if the voltage is between here and here, the wind vane is actually pointing south. Okay, so we have this voltage we have to measure. Now, that's the tricky part. Remember, computers deal with ones and zeros. So what we have to do, we have to convert this voltage into a digital value. And we do that by using the magic of an analog to digital converter. It converts an analog signal to digital numbers. Now, on the Arduino, which has an analog digital converter built in, which we'll look at in just a moment, it has 10 bits of accuracy. That's 1,024 values. So you read this 1,024 value, you divide that into whatever that value is, whether it's 512, which will, you divide that into uh, five volts and you cut or multiply it, or you take the ratio, you know, 512 over 1,024, which is 0.5, times five volts, you get 2.5 volts. Now, that would, our little software would say, ooh, if I'm getting 512, that means the wind is blowing south right here. Okay, because we measured 2.5 volts in here. Now, zero would correspond to zero. Five volts would correspond to 1,024 because it's 10 bits. Two to the 10th equals 1,024. Now, it actually goes from zero to 1,023, but let's not worry about that right now. So you kind of have the basis now of we're measuring that voltage right up here in the screen, and we're using that to determine the wind direction. And each one of the wind directions uh, follow this little table here, which uh, I'm not gonna bother you with, but it's in the specification for the weather rack. And we can take that information, and by knowing what voltage is there, we can convert it to wind direction. So all pretty simple. Once we have it in the computer, we know what the wind direction is. So let's talk just a little bit about what a system like that looks like. Okay, here we have the wind vane. 
And boy, am I artistic. Okay, here's the little wind vane. And we get a voltage off there. The voltage goes over here. We know what that voltage is. And we actually measure that now into the ADC, the analog to digital converter. Okay, and then it goes off into computer land. Then it goes to our computer. Now, computer, yes, P, okay. So that's pretty cool, even though my drawing obviously isn't very good. So we measure the voltage, it goes in the ADC, then the analog digital converter converts it from analog, the voltage to digital, ones and zeros, and sends it to the computer. And then we can interpret that as what the wind direction is by looking at those values. So that's pretty good. Let's look at what some of this stuff looks like in terms of what an analog converter is, analog digital converter. We um, spent a lot of time uh, in, a, in a recent talk talking about the way analog digital converters work and how they can do. So I'm just going to kind of briefly talk about this. Okay, if you have an Arduino, this is an Arduino board, you'll notice down here at the bottom, you, it will say analog IO. You have 10 channels of analog IO. These are 10 bit analog to digital converters. So they convert an analog signal into zero to 1023. Knowing what voltage you're at, five volts in this case, you can determine what the voltage is. Then you can look at your table and say the wind is going south, like this talk is going south. It's cool. So with an Arduino, it's really easy to hook up a wind vane because the analog digital converter is already built in. Here's a Raspberry Pi. Now, you know, Raspberry Pi is a much more complex machine, has a lot of software on it, and you can do amazing cool things with it, just like you can do cool things with an Arduino. A Raspberry Pi does not have an analog to digital converter built in, unlike the Arduino. So what that means is we're going to have to add something to it in order to be able to talk to the uh, um, wind vane. And we do that by adding a little board to it. Here it is. This is a 16-bit analog to digital converter. 16 bits means we get a lot more accuracy than 10 bits. And uh, at 10 bits, the, the wind vane, it's pretty marginal in terms of being able to distinguish all the different voltages. And if you get some noise in the system or something, you'll point the wrong wind direction. That problem pretty well goes away with a 16-bit analog digital converter. This is based on that wonderful TS, or TS chip, the AS, uh, ADS, 1116. So it's four channels of 16 bits. So you have four really cool analog ports that you can put off. This is a little Switch Talk Lab product that sells for about $15. You hook this up to your Raspberry Pi, and then suddenly you have the analog to digital conversion available. You plug the weather rack or plug the wind vane into this, and then you can take that once again. We change it into 16 bits this time. So it goes from zero to let's say uh, 65,000, which is 16 bits. And you can figure out what the voltage is by looking at the ratio again. In this case, 2.5 volts, halfway between zero and five volts, would be 16,000 instead of 512. So you need to know the number of bits you have in your analog digital converter to do that little piece of math. Then you take the 2.5 volts, look at your table, and you say, yes, the wind vane is pointing south. So you can use that information for all sorts of stuff. So that's the way a wind vane works. And it works very cool. It's a very cool little instrument and inexpensive too. So what about some of the other ways people will measure wind direction? Well, you know, you can measure wind direction with a wind sock and you can rotate that around and you could actually look at that. You can have a big propeller on the front of this and get wind speed and wind direction out of one um, out of one particular instrument. We choose to use an anemometer, which is a separate instrument. You can also do it in a couple of cool other ways. One of those real cool other ways is to use a bunch of ultrasonics. You have little ultrasonic transmitters in a circle, kind of looks like this, and by looking at the Doppler effect, you can actually tell, well, the wind's coming from this way because the sound is traveling different than between here. Remember, your little computer is really fast and can measure the speed of sound very quickly or very easily, I should say. So little shifts in the speed of sound can tell you the direction through that. That's really cool. So 
let's just summarize what we've been talking about. We found the wind vane. We know how it works. There's little switches in here, it connects up to resistors. The resistors then are read in through an analog to digital converter, converted into digital, the digital domain inside our computer. And we look at a table to determine, in the case of the Arduino, 512 degrees, that's south. That is south, and north is a different value. We can also do this with the Raspberry Pi by using an, an outside analog to digital converter, that's like this four channel device, and we can hook that up to the Raspberry Pi, and suddenly your Raspberry Pi knows what wind direction it is. So, you know, we're almost getting ready to build a weather station, right? We learned how to, in the last talk to talk about anemometers and the wind speed, and now we know how to do wind direction. So, there you have our talk on weather instruments today. This is the way a wind vane works. Coming up next, we're gonna talk about that nasty little rain bucket. So thank you very much everybody today for coming in and uh, we'll see you next time on Weather Week from Switch Doc Labs.